Hello and welcome to another episode of Safety for Cruisers. Today we are in lovely Punta de Mita after a uh, bit of a upwind bash, hence the boat is covered in salt. And uh, today we're going to be talking about jack lines, how to use them, what they are, and uh, how to move around a boat with a tether uh, connected to your jack lines. So to start out with, we'll talk about uh, what are jack lines. Uh, jack lines are basically uh, the term used to describe uh, any method of securing lines to a vessel that you are then going to clip into to prevent yourself from going overboard. They are not to be confused with wipe lines, which are the uh, white uh, lines that run uh, port and aft on most vessels. Uh, they are, in our case, the yellow webbing straps uh, that are running below that. So, uh, like I said, they're designed uh, so that you can clip into them, which prevents you from going overboard. Uh, kind of talk about when to use jack lines. Um, they are catered more to, you know, offshore sailing. Uh, there are some power boats that use these and absolute hats off to you guys uh, and you gals who uh, really go that extra mile for safety. But most of the time you're gonna see uh, sailors using these. And uh, essentially people ask me, when should I be wearing a life jacket? Uh, and my answer is if you can't swim to shore, uh, you should probably wear a life jacket. So in the Bahamas, that means, you know, you might have a couple miles if you're a good swimmer. Um, you can go between all the islands, no problem. But if you are up in New England or Alaska, uh, you can't swim more than a couple hundred yards if you're not wearing a dry suit without getting hypothermia and drowning. So I would say probably be good to wear a life jacket almost always then. Uh, that is kind of the precursor to jack lines. Obviously you have to be uh, wearing a PFD with a tether in order to use jack lines. There are some older style harnesses that have no flotation that you can't use with a tether, but almost everyone is gonna use an integrated uh, PFD with a harness that your tether is going to attach to. So if you can't swim, you should probably be wearing a life jacket. And uh, if you are concerned that there is a possibility of either you going overboard or if you were to go overboard it would be a catastrophic situation for you uh, that would be another t that would be when to use jack lines so you know if we're more than five miles offshore uh, and uh, you know we're shorthanded I'll put jack lines on if we've got a crew of four and there's going to be uh, a bunch of people up on deck uh, might not necessarily have to have the jack lines up uh, and be clipped in if it's uh, decent weather. But if uh, you know you're with that same crew and those conditions deteriorate, then you want to get those up. Um, it's always better to have them up before you start a trip than have to put them up in foul seas because obviously they're designed to keep you safe. If you're up on the bow getting dunked as you submarine, uh, that's not a super safe place for you to be. There's not as many opportunities to clip into places, so always put your jack lines up if you think you're going to need them. Kind of like reefing, if you think you're going to need a reef, you should probably already reef. If you think you need your jack lines, you should probably already have them on. Um, my rule for clipping into jack lines is if you are the only person on deck uh, and you're offshore, you have to be clipped in 100% of the time. We'll go back into the cockpit, I'll show you how we do that. Um, if you are ever going to go out of the cockpit offshore, you must be clipped in as well. So that means that if you're offshore and the weather's nice and you're just on a passage, there's two people in the cockpit, you're both on watch, one of you might be reading, one of you is, uh, is keeping an eye on, on everything, you don't necessarily have to be clipped in um, in my books if it's nice weather. I always say, why not just clip in? It's not a big deal. It doesn't really impede your comfort. Just go ahead and do it. But my absolute rule is that if there's two people uh, in the cockpit, you don't have to be clipped in if it's good weather. Um, if one of those if one of those uh, people goes either down below, then that person now who's remaining has to clip in, which is why I say just go ahead and do it. So you're not constantly clipping, unclipping. There's no point in doing that. Or if, like I said, if anybody leaves the cockpit, they have to be clipped in as well. So naturally, if that one person clips in, goes to the bow to do something, the other person in the cockpit now has to be clipped in as well. So those are kind of some guidelines on how I uh, how I run things when we're offshore on how to use jack lines. And now we're going to go into how to travel with the jack lines. So we're back here at the rearmost connection uh, of our jack lines at the aft of the boat. And as you can see, I have mine girth hitched around this big uh, giant stainless uh, support that uh, is connected to our davits. 
the jack lines do have to be connected at all points to structural members, so uh, most of the time you're going to use cleats. Uh, some boats have pad eyes dedicated to that, in fact a lot of them do nowadays. Um, but uh, we are not one of those boats, and so what we elected to is to put it to this uh, this davit connection here, we didn't. We don't want to go to a stanchion to any uh, non-structural member. This is a nice big piece of stainless. It's through bolted. Um, that's not going anywhere. So, as we move forward, you're going to see that the jack lines are twisted as they lie on the deck. Uh, ours are actually above the deck because our bow and our stern uh, and the way I tension them brings the line up off the deck. Not all, all boats have that. So, if you're on a boat that doesn't have uh, doesn't have the same hull layout as us, the jack lines are going to be laying on the deck. And if they're twisted, it's going to be a lot easier to grab them off the deck than getting a piece of wet webbing and trying to get your fingers underneath it, uh, especially if you have gloves or sailing in somewhere a little bit colder. So that's why we put twists in our jack lines. We technically don't need them, uh, but it's a habit that I'm in and uh, I think it looks kind of cool. So that's uh, why we have twists in them. As we move back, you're going to see that the jack lines are essentially woven through the shrouds here. So how you, this is how this is done is going to vary depending on the vessel that you have. But the important thing is that the jack lines are running through at least one structural member and they're running inside of that member. The reason for that is that if you have the jack lines, if this was to, if this were to be outside of the shroud and I were to be connected to this, and I were to go over, there would be nothing to, my, my short tether is not as big of a deal, but uh, if I was on my long tether, there would be nothing to stop the jack lines from coming all the way up and depending on how tight you have them, potentially even over your lifelines. What that means is with the six foot tether, you're gonna be underwater, you're not gonna be able to breathe and you're either gonna have to cut loose or you might drown. So it's really important to run them inside of either a shroud, again, some boats have pad eyes that are in the middle of the boat, uh, kind of a midships here that you can secure those to. You just need to have the line running through something that's going to prevent it from stretching and coming all the way outboard uh, to give yourself more clearance from the water if you were to go over. Uh, so as we come forward, uh, I will, we're gonna go over how to move around with these a little bit later, but uh, show you uh, kind of a unique setup that we have here. This is how we've secured our jack lines to the uh, fore uh, part of the vessel. So you can see it's around a cleat, and uh, this is a bit of a unique, uh, bit of a unique system. Most people are just going to uh, use a uh, use a cleat hitch around uh, around their forward cleat wherever they're going to tension it from. Or like I said, sometimes you can tie a uh, tie a water knot, just put a loop in the end of your rigging, and then actually tension it with either uh, just a, you know, Dyneema strand or a, potentially even a block and tackle, whatever you want to do. The important thing is that it's tight. And so uh, the system that we have is uh, called a voodoo knot or a voodoo hitch. And um, it's a super cool method uh, that we use for our little box there to tie it down. It's a essentially a self-tightening uh, method for webbing and uh, the way it works uh, you can look these up online but the way it works is that uh, in one direction you can loosen it up and we can take it off and then in the other direction you haul on this until you get it as tight as you can and now the friction between all of these different points and the way that it's connected is going to stop it from coming undone I've done tens of thousands of miles underway with this system and it works fantastic. Uh, so if you're concerned about it slipping, you can always back that up with a cleat hitch or something else here, but it's a really great way to tension the jack lines without having to deal with any other auxiliary kind of items. So uh, we're gonna head back to the back of the boat and uh, we'll show you how we get in and out and kind of the rules of uh, using jack lines. Okay, so we're in the cockpit now, and uh, this is how I would be sitting if I was standing uh, or sitting watch uh, on, my, on my boat. So I'm back here, I've got access to all my instruments, my autopilot, and I'm clipped into the boat. Depending on the boats that you have, some people will run a jack line inside the cockpit. That's a really cool option. Um, I've done that sometimes, but it's uh, not usually necessary uh, the way we have things set up. Um, so you just have to be clipped into again a structural member. So either it's going to be the uh, either it's going to be the jack line you have run inside. Sometimes it'll be a pad eye over here. Some people will have it just a you know a 
clipping or something coming inside that you can clip into. This need to be clipped into something structural. So for us, it's gonna be this main sheet block. Obviously, this is through bolted in a half dozen to a dozen places. Uh, it has incredible load that it takes with the main sheet. So this is a very secure place for me to be, uh, not worried about that breaking. Um, so if we're going to be, uh, from, if I'm gonna be going out of the cockpit, out forward, um, we're gonna have to do some adjusting to this whole situation so that we have one point of attachment minimum at all times. Uh, what that means is that you are always clipped in to one of your two tethers at some point. So if I was being lazy and I was just to unclip this and now clip it into my jack line, I have no attachment points. That's not cool, don't do that. Um, if you're on a boat and it's a good safety culture, everyone should kind of be like, hey, make sure you're clipped in, you know, make sure this. If you're in a bay and you're just finishing a passage and you, the jack lines are still up, you know, you can, you can unclip from them. But for the purpose of this video, we're gonna talk about how to be moving around. So say I'm going from reading, I have to go check something on the bow. I'm gonna go, uh, I'm gonna be leaving the cockpit. Now we'll uh, show you how to travel. So this is why in our tether video, we went over different kinds of tethers. This is why I like the short and the long is because we have a travel and we have a locking. So I'm on my travel tether just because I wanna be able to move around and not be constricted in the cockpit. But before we uh, get out, we gotta switch over. So I'm gonna go to my working tether here. I'm gonna unclip. So you see how we always maintain one point of contact. And now I'm going to go to my jack line. So, now I'm connected in two places, which means that I can unclip from this single one. We've got a little bit of a special, you know, situation here. We've got two lines that are run up, which means that we have to do some, uh, do some maneuvers in order to get to the bow, but that's good because that's how we're practicing. So um, right now, obviously we can't just straight up unclip because now we're only on one attachment. So in order to pass either a sheet uh, if you're gonna pass a pad eye, you need to use that second clip. Uh, how you want to position that doesn't really matter. Some people like to clip behind their primary. Uh, I like to clip in front usually just because it kind of keeps me moving in that direction. So I'm gonna take my working tether, I'm gonna go in front, and then I could actually move around on my working tether. But if you notice, it's kind of tight. And as you're gonna see in a second, we're gonna pass some shrouds. So it's a lot easier for me just to keep on going as I move forward, go back on my traveling tether, and stow this uh, this other one. Always clip your secondary tether, whichever one you're not using, back to that attachment point. You wanna get comfortable with both hands, depending on what release system you have, but you always wanna be clipped into one and have the other one clipped to your PFD so it's not swinging around and guys hitting you all kinds of places it doesn't uh, feel good. Um, you wanna make sure it's out of the way and it's not gonna catch anything too. So as we move forward, um, we're gonna pass the shroud and uh, since I have ours tensioned uh, a good amount, I kinda do like a little dance as I go through here. So I'll kinda hold it and then I'll just bump the jack line with my foot as I move up. Um, you don't have to do that. I'll just show you a regular motion here. As I move forward, it's not gonna require much, but you just kinda bump your, uh, your tether with your foot to get it past any friction points you have. Not all boats have that, but ours does, so that's how we have to do it. Uh, and so now we're gonna get up to the front. Uh, we've, we, you know, we've maxed out our travel. Say I have to do something with our furler. Sometimes the furling line will jump uh, jump out of the furler on this boat. It's an old design. So sometimes you'll end up up here and you gotta, you gotta, you gotta find a, a good secure place to work. So uh, what that means is you're gonna now go to your working tether. And the reason that we do that is that if I were to go over, say we were on a starboard tack, if I were to go over on the leeward side of the boat, I'm not gonna do it, but if you were to imagine this being extended fully and now that being over the side with my uh, not so trim self attached to it, I'm gonna be right at the waterline. And if we're on a uh, if we're on a you know a close reach or a close haul, that might mean that I'm under the water. So you want to minimize the amount of time that you're connected on this long tether. If possible, you want to get on that short one as soon as you're up to the place that you can work. So um, we're gonna go to our working tether. And another great thing about the working tether, one of the things I'm not a huge fan about on this boat is that there's not a lot of places to clip in on the bow. I really like, um, you know, just a big, even if 
if I just put a shackle here, I'd be able to clip into that. And I do do that over passages sometimes. But right now we don't have it set up for that. So I'm just gonna show you here um, on our cleat here. So now I'm connected in to our jack lines. And now I can work. And what I really like about these uh, these short tethers is I can kind of balance here. If I'm working down low, obviously I'm pretty stable. But if I'm not and I need to do something up here, you know, I could potentially lean back and have my hands free and actually be using this tether to balance myself uh, as I move around the boat. And the great thing about switching over to your working tether early is that whenever you have to move back, and uh, we'll go around the other side uh, just to show you the scenery there, um, you've already got your working tether or your traveling tether, sorry, free. So now I'm gonna come over here and uh, we'll actually show you um, on the back a couple times where you really do need to use that full reach and it can, uh, it can make a big difference which tethers you have. Um, so now that we're back on our traveler, we'll uh, go ahead and come back here our way to the front, kick it around, move it around, and now that we're here, we have to jump this again. So, like I said, I prefer to move forward, so I'm going to grab my worker, move this around, and then jump it again before I unclip, and we go all the way to the back. So every boat has its challenge points. Um, sometimes it's going to be getting in and out of the cockpit. Uh, sometimes it's going to be on the bow. Sometimes it's going to be on the stern. One of our kind of challenging spots is if, say, I wanted to go back over to starboard, I've got this giant gap. Um, even with both of my tethers, I can't, you know, I can't get all the way across that other side, and our beam isn't even that big. So you have to be creative sometimes. Uh, but it's again really important that you stay structural. So. Um, what we do, uh, like when we're fishing, um, and say, you know, we've got a hand line on this cleat here, I'll go ahead and throw my worker onto the shroud there. Not my favorite place for it because that's uh, our SSB uh, wired to our insulated backstay there. So not my favorite, but uh, it's kind of our only option when we're back here besides going to another one of the davits, which would mean you'd have to kind of do some kind of girth hitchy action, which I don't like. So this would be how I would reel a fish in here. So I've got plenty of room to work. I got all, all my freedom here. I don't even need to be on my traveler. I can stay on this because again, the more, the more often that you stay on this, the better you are. Uh, and then when I'm ready to go back into the cockpit, um, this is kind of one of the reachier ones. Uh, so I could either go back to my jack lines, back over there, but sailors are intrinsically lazy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reach all the way over. You can see I'm kind of maxing this one out, but still got enough space. I can go back here, I can disconnect here, and now I can hop my way back into the cockpit, and I'm back on watch, I'm good to go. So that's how we move around. Uh, that's how uh, kind of our boat is set up. Obviously, everyone's is going to be different. The last thing I'm going to talk about is uh, just a little bit more detail about cutting away. So we touched on this briefly in our uh, PFD video. Uh, if you haven't seen that, check it out. It talks about all the goodies I have set up on this thing. Um, but cutting away is kind of your last ditch scenario. Like we were talking about with how you set the jack lines up, staying clipped in on your working tether, we're doing everything we can to minimize the chances that we end up over the leeward side of the boat underwater. But there are stories of that happening. Obviously, it's you know it's not impossible. So what we need to kind of have in the back of our mind is that if we do uh, if we do have to cut away, we need to have the muscle memory in order to be able to do that. Because you have to imagine. You just fell over the boat, you might have hit your head, you're kind of dazed, now you're getting dragged under the boat, you're in however many degree water you're in, uh, you know, the boat's going however many knots, you're getting dragged, the PFD's probably starting to ride up around your ears because you don't have your leg straps on because very few people use them. So this is just like in skydiving, you always practice your two handles. Your uh, your cutaway and pulling your reserve. That's you always in your in your training and your AFF training. You're going to be sitting here constantly pulling these two imaginary handles. It's really important. Side note for skydivers, randomly, uh, that you practice uh, that same maneuver when you're under canopy as well, um, because those handles move. And the reason I'm talking about skydivers on this tangent is because 
this moves. It's all well and good to practice like, okay, this is my cutaway handle and I, I love this tether. I talked about it a bunch in the other video. This has a cutaway handle, like a skydiving rig. Um, not all of them have it. The other, uh, the more common ones are gonna have like this little white tabby thing that releases this, uh, this quick connect. Not a big fan of, but if that's what you have, again, you don't wanna practice it down here because it's not where it's gonna be. You're gonna be hanging from this thing so you want to be, you want to kind of, you know, close your eyes, feel around, imagine what it's going to be like, and you want to practice getting hold of that, and you want to know, you know, at, at this position, do I need to pull up? Do I need to pull down? Uh, how do I need to be able to cut away? Because if the first time you ever think about all this stuff is when you are underwater and you didn't get a full breath of air, you might not have enough time before you lose consciousness to figure that out and cut away. So. That is our uh, video on jack lines and everything, and I uh, hope you enjoyed. Stick around for some more good stuff coming next week.